Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, I am Mr. Cobalt, and today I am going to be going over uh, how to use molar mass as a conversion factor. Now, I have done this in another video, um, but this time we're going to focus on using the molar masses of compounds to convert from grams to moles or moles to grams. In this video, I'm going to do one example to kind of show you how it's done. And then in future videos, um, I'll go over more examples like word problems where you have to read the word problem, pull out the information, and convert. Okay, but I just want this to be an introductory video, video uh, to, so you can just see how it's done. Okay, um, so molar mass. Remember that the molar mass is the uh, mass in grams of one mole of your substance. And again, um, this is going to be easily determined from your periodic table. So if you know the atomic masses of the elements, you know what elements are in your formula, then what you can do is add all of those together and you get the formula mass, which is the molar mass uh, as well. Okay, so in this example, uh, it's asking us to convert a certain mass, 10.8 grams, of a certain substance to moles. Now, um, this is a little bit trickier. Uh, some problems, they make it easy by just giving you the formula. But not me, because you need, to, you need to know how to go from the name to the formula. So you need to know naming really well, because this is one of the ways that they like to trip you up in problems, is they don't give you the formula, and you have to figure out what the formula is. If you can't figure out the formula, then you're not going to get the problem right. Okay, so it's really important that you, if, you, if you're struggling with namings, go back to naming the molecules and make sure you practice a lot with that. Okay, so with uh, converting. So in this problem, I have to know where I'm beginning and where I'm gonna end. Here, they, they're asking for moles. That's where I need to end, and they give me mass. So that's where I gotta begin. So I'm gonna set up in my problem. I have 10.8 grams of carbon dioxide. So I need to know the formula for carbon dioxide. So this, uh, this is a uh, non, uh, how do I say this? Um, it's not ionic, it is a molecular substance. So, that it's, so you can tell because it's named in the uh, molecular way, in the um, covalent way. So it's using the Greek prefixes. So the, remember, the Greek prefixes tell you how many of each element are in that formula. And the first one, if there is no Greek prefix, then that tells you there's only one. So here, carbon has no prefix. So I have one carbon. So there's one carbon. Di means two, and oxide is referring to oxygen. So I have two oxygens, so CO2. So um, if you've had chemistry before, you have probably already knew that carbon dioxide is CO2. But I just want to go over how you would do that for anything that you're not familiar with. Um, okay, so I have my formula. So I have 10.8 grams of CO2. I put it over one. And now I need to convert from grams. My goal is moles. So the relationship that relates grams directly to moles is the molar mass. So I need to calculate the molar mass. So I have the formula. I know how many carbons I have. I know how many oxygens I have. So now all I have to do is add those together. So I'm going to do that down here. So carbon, carbon has 12.011. So that's the atomic mass of carbon. I only have one of those. So that's going to be multiplied by one. And then I'm going to add my two oxygen. So it's going to be uh, the atomic mass of oxygen is 16. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to multiply that by two because I have two of them. And then that should come out to whatever number. So you're going to calculate that on your calculator. I think it comes out to like 44. So 12.0, oops, hold on. So 12.011 times one. Of course, you don't need to do that, but I'm being anal. Um, plus... Uh, 
times 2 equals 44.011. So 40, so 44.011. And then this is going to be your molar mass. So that's going to be grams per mole. Now, one of the things I want to point out is significant figures. So remember, um, what you're multiplying by counting numbers, those are exact, so you don't worry about significant figures for the one and the two. But this you got from the, uh, the periodic table, so you got to watch out for uh, sig figs here. So here I have, uh, I have five, five sig figs, and here I have four. So, um, so this is going to end up with four and six. Um, but then when I add those together, right, I'm looking at decimal places. So this has two decimal places. This has three. So two is less than three, right? So then it's going to be two decimal places. So four sig figs, but then two decimal places. So I am limited to two decimal places. So this is, this is my molar mass. So... So, but I can carry, I can carry on the calculation with everything, but I just got to remember that the last, the last digit is my first one, zero one. Okay. So, um, since I have grams of CO2 on the, on the top, I need grams of CO2 on the bottom. So this you can rewrite as an equality. So this tells me that I have four, zero, 44. 011 grams of CO2 is equal to one mole of CO2. So since I have grams on top, I'm going to put these grams on the bottom. So I'm going to put 44.011 grams of CO2 on the bottom. And then the one mole of CO2 goes on top. So one mole of CO2. So grams of CO2 cancel out. I'm left with moles. That is what they're asking for. So I am done. So now all I do is I multiply by the top and divide by the bottom. And so when I do that, I get 10.8 divided by 44.011 equals. And I get a zero. 0 0.245393. So 45393 moles of CO2. Now, this is what my calculator gave me. It gave me a few more digits, but I'm only writing this down. Um, so now I have to check my significant figures. Now, since we're multiplying and dividing here, then I have to have the, the least number of sig figs. So remember, down here, I'm only allowed up to the one, so the first one. So this one is the last significant figure. So this significant, this, uh, this measure only has uh, four, four sig figs. This measure has three. So three is less than four, so that means that my answer can only have three sig figs. One, two, three. So I cut it off at the five, drop everything else. The three is here, so I keep that as a five. 0 0.245 moles of CO2. And that's how you use molar mass to convert between mass and moles. You can go the other way as well, right? So if they give you moles and they want mass, you use molar mass. But the only difference is since if you start with moles, then the moles will be on the bottom, one mole of whatever your substance is, and then the grams will be on top. That's the only difference. So that's how you use molar mass to convert between grams and moles. Um, you can then use uh, the next step, which would be Avogadro's number, right? So you could then, if I wanted to convert moles to particles, right? If I want to know how many molecules of carbon dioxide I have, then I would need another conversion that would allow me to convert from moles to particles. And that's why we use Avogadro's number, because we know that one mole is equal to Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, 
right? But that would be another step, okay? So um, in the next uh, video, I will go over a couple of examples where uh, we will do that two-step uh, problem, um, and we will continue to use molar mass to um, uh, solve problems. All right, thank you very much for joining me. I hope this was helpful. Um, uh, if you like this video, like the video, share the video with your friends, um, subscribe to the channel, and uh, ring the notification bell uh, so you can get more videos. Make a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think of this video. Ask me questions, anything you want me to go over in the future or explain in more detail. Um, I'd be more happy to do that. Uh, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.